whenever you know whenever you hear something like oh this parent abused their child and it's in the news i always believed it it was true and then i always believed oh cps is out there helping children that are being abused but when i personally went through this situation it it made me take a step back and think okay when i hear about that stuff i'm like are the children really being abused or are they are they wrongfully accusing that parent too it just it, it makes me think more about like okay And then now, seeing as how I personally dealt with CPS for a whole year and how they tried to destroy our lives and take our children, now I'm seeing the the bad side of that system. And it's very questionable. Like, why are 91% of children, um, why, why are these reports coming out that, you know, all these abuse claims, 91% of them are found to be false and unsubstantiated? You know, people need to start asking questions, and I hope that people can unite and fight for changes together because it seems like it's just getting much worse. I've had some people contacted, contact me, and they're going through a similar situation from the exact same hospital. So it's it's very concerning that this is continuing to happen, and it seems like it's just getting much worse over time. I think there would need to be a complete overall of the overhaul of the perception of that like because a lot of times when news gets reported initially the headline is so intriguing it's so um inviting because it, it baits you in right it's like yeah. woman and husband found abusing their child you're like oh my god how can parents do that yeah. but then when you read into the article you begin to see that okay they didn't necessarily abuse them there's a suspicion of it but then when they're found innocent you don't ever get that article yeah exactly And something too to think about is like, this is what I was thinking about. I'm like, how come this information has been kept from us for so many years? Like, think about that. Have, have I seen, I even thought about that myself. I'm like, have I seen these stories in the news where people are being misdiagnosed with children are being misdiagnosed with abuse? They're charging the parents. No, for many years, we haven't seen these stories. And, you know, it makes you very concerned as to why maybe if people don't know this is a huge problem, then they can't fight for changes. But now I'm so thankful that in the past few years, these stories are starting to come out. People Magazine shared some stories about some families and I'm seeing them pop up now. And it's it's good that it's fine, the truth is finally starting to surface. So that way it can help us fight for change to help protect children and families. I think many people are so quick to want to protect children and rightfully so. Like children are very vulnerable in a lot of situations, but they don't consider... What if it's not true? Yeah. Right? Because I think every parent or every person should understand that for every person that's falsely accused of something or just accused, and for them to be determined to be innocent of that accusation or for the charges to be beaten, they would have to look at it as, you know what? That could be me. And I don't think there's enough of that. Exactly. And you right? And you and you raise a good yeah. point where you used to read articles, oh my God, like this person is being abused. And then when you went through it, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's the other side where it is completely not true. And I think if more people would read the news with with your lens that you just described, I think it would be less shock value and there'd be less false reporting, at least in the media, because no one wants to be labeled um, a child molester or a child abuser or anything of that nature, right? Because that's something that's going to stay with you for a very long time to some people, regardless mm -hmm. of what the decision is. Have you faced some of that where you still feel that you're fighting the situation, even though you've been proven that it hasn't been true? I don't because I, in my heart, I know the truth of what happened. And I have so much evidence and documentation to prove that what we went through is true. Um, it's just, it's hard because people can't grasp how much this devastates your entire life. And then dealing with the aftermath of that situation. And I, I'm so thankful for you and your awesome podcast that you keep it real and you tell the truth. And it's like real, raw, like situations people are going through. And that's what we need is more, more people like you and your amazing podcasts and the news stations, like tell the truth, speak about things that are really happening and people will gravitate towards that because they can relate to it. Like so many families that are, when I start sharing your amazing podcasts on my, my social media, 
they'll start gravitating towards your podcast too, because so many families have been going through this and it helps create this huge awareness. What happens when we share a story in the news and the media and through podcasts is it helps add steam and traction to much needed changes within the system. Like what happened with in, in Texas, the news station and um, the Houston Chronicle, they exposed this huge broken system. And then the lawmakers that I've had meetings with, they're like, you know, it, the news did expose a huge problem within our system and we are trying to fight to change it. And it takes a, it takes a while. You know, I've had meetings with many lawmakers in many states and they're like, we understand you're asking us to pass, you know, have a law passed, but do you know the process of that? And I'm like, yeah, it took two and a half years to have a law passed in Texas. You know, can we get started now? Because we know it takes time. But it, that's what we need is we need that passion from these lawmakers to help fight for families and children. And I don't think they, that there's that connection yet where they really, because honestly, this can't happen to, happen to a lawmaker or someone that works in their office because the way the system works, it probably won't happen because they know who they are and who they work for. But if they can just put themselves in other families' shoes and think, man, what if this happened to me and my children? I think that would help get lawmakers on board to help fight for changes. Because I've had many meetings with lawmakers and some of them just don't choose not to do anything or they have so many other bills and laws that they need passed. But if they could put themselves in our shoes and with their own children and think, man, what if this happened to me and my, me and my children? How would I feel? Would I, would I not be doing what she's trying to do and other organizations trying to fight for change to try to protect our children and families? Because it's very concerning. If there's about like 500,000, if not more children in foster care right now, 91% of them shouldn't be there. 91% because that report from the Children's Bureau said 91% of these abuse claims are found to be false and uns unsubstantiated. And that's why we fight for changes is to help protect the children from this. And the, the parents and caregivers, There's I found that lots of parents and caregivers are actually being wrongfully convicted. I know a mother right now in Tennessee, her name is Tanya. She has been wrongfully convicted and she's in there in prison right now for 16 years and her family is suffering without her. She has two small children and her husband. And it's, it's so sad to see the devastation in this whole family, especially her. Can you imagine being in prison for 16 years and you're in fact innocent? You're, you were you wrongfully convicted because your attorney didn't fight for you and court didn't do a good enough job. So now she's sitting in prison for the next 16 years and she's in fact innocent which breaks my heart is like how many other people are in jail and prison right now and they're in fact innocent and how many children are sitting in the, in the foster care completely with a huge emotional trauma that'll affect them for the rest of their lives. And they're sitting in foster care right now for months and years and they're being adopted out to non-family members. And these parents are losing their children forever and their children, the children never get to see their parents again. And they're in fact, and the parents did nothing wrong. There's something, there's, the system is very broken and it needs to be fixed. And I'm so thankful for all the organizations, families that are fighting, and attorneys that are fighting for changes. So, so thankful for your awesome podcast for bringing this huge awareness in the news and the media, because that's what we need. We need to unite and fight for changes together. Because if we don't, no one's children are safe until this, this huge problem is solved. Yeah.